Hi, welcome to Life on the Rock. Tonight, our guest is Greg Robeson. It's going to be a great show. He's going to tell us about his pilgrimage, uh, bringing about a thousand young people to the March for Life in Washington, D.C. It's called Life Really Matters. Much more than just a bus ride. There's going to be speakers and uh, preparation work and then also formation to send these young people back out in the culture after the event to uh, really charge them up to do some good. Uh, good to see you, Doug. Thank you, Father. Good to you be had there. a good Christmas? Yes, I did. How about you? Good to, yeah, we did. We had yeah. a nice, peaceful. We had a great retreat, our community retreat at that time. It was very yeah. good. Now, a week from this Saturday, we have the Walk for Life West Coast coming up. Doug and I are going to go out there and televise it. We'll have a, a desk back here with Doug Keck and I think Father Joseph. And Doug, you're going to be in the field again, right? I will be, yes. I'll be dealing with all the Occupy people this time. Right, right. No, no, just kidding. <laughs> uh, yes, I'll be out in the, in the crowd uh, drawing uh, you know, different people up from uh, different locations and just seeing where they're from, what inspires them to come to this. And uh, you know, really the great thing about this is the unity. We get a chance to, it's a bittersweet thing. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're out there because of uh, abortion, which is a tragedy, obviously. It's a, it's a horrific thing. But the unity of people coming together uh, of all ages, all walks of life, different religions, you name it, all in, in the name of fighting this, this battle to preserve, protect, and defend life. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a beautiful thing. I'll be out in the field, though, talking with the people. You'll be at a, at a, at a stand-up position. A nice chair. A nice chair. <laughs> <laughs> but this year, the, the battle is being amped up a bit because we're going to be starting in front of Civic Center Plaza. So it's a new location. It's still in San Francisco. In fact, it's right in the heart of San Francisco <clears throat> at Civic Center Plaza, which is their city hall. The rally is going to be there at 12:30, so it's a new time and a, a new location. Then the the walk's going to take place down Market Street. It's going to end at Justin Herman Plaza, where we used to begin the walk. And uh, at 11 o'clock, they're going to have an info uh, rally, they call it, where different pro-life movements will come and set up a tent and things. Just explain what they're doing in the pro-life field. That's always a lot of fun. You meet a lot of people that are out there doing a lot of great work. So it's a new time, new location, new route. We're going to walk. This is the main parade route for San Francisco. When the Giants win or whoever, you know, they, they, they do a parade down Market Street, and that's what we're doing. So it's being taken up a, 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 a level. I spoke with Eva today, and she's, uh, pray for them. They're really stressed out, really working hard because everything's new. And, and this will make it easier for buses and things to get in there. So hopefully uh, it'll really help the, the walk. But say a prayer that things, right. things go well. And since Doug, you and I met, we've had some big events here in Alabama. We know the. Uh, <laughs> we knew this had to come. Yeah, right. The great <laughs> uh, collegiate football championship. Alabama, University, University of Alabama won. They beat uh, LSU. So we want to congratulate the university, which is only about 45 minutes from here. And, uh, you know, Tuscaloosa was really hit hard by those tornadoes, and the whole state of Alabama suffered a lot. So. This gives Alabama something to cheer about. Yeah. It was a close and, uh, game, though, for a while there, yeah, <laughs> at least before kickoff. All right. And <laughs> we do want to give a congrats to also to LSU. They had a great season, and so many uh, Louisiana people support this network. Right. And, yeah. uh, and your family was a bit divided over this one, weren't they? Yes. Uh, my whole family is from New Orleans. Parents, even my brother was born there, so I was watching it at my mom's house and didn't realize it, but they were LSU fans. I was born here, I'm an Alabama fan, and so we were a house divided, but... Uh, but you were praying for Alabama, and we know that when, you, when, when you've got a, a man of God connected to a football team, that seems to help him win a little bit sometimes, doesn't it? Uh, well, I, I don't think I could take credit for that. <laughs> but Coach Saban is uh, Catholic, and I heard he does go to some daily masses. I don't know uh -huh. if every day, but uh, he is Catholic and has, does some good charity work in Tuscaloosa. Awesome. But you know, another football player is uh, getting some attention. Tim Tebow. Have you noticed him? Yeah, yeah. This is it's exciting too. <clears throat> you know, we had the the uh, couple of years ago or so. I think it was a Super Bowl commercial or somewhere in there. Uh, the pro life statement he and his mother made in that commercial and that 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 stirred a lot of things up. And you know, Tebow's been known back when he was in his college days for having the John 316 under the uh, the black eye mm -hmm. eye paint there under the mm -hmm. eyes there and. Uh, you know, he, he still gets the flack, you know, right. from being a man who, who gives credit to God. You know, yeah. He's famous for the T-bowing move. They're calling it T-bowing now. Right. <clears throat> you go down on the knee and put the hand yeah. up. It's, prayer. It's, it's what he does. It's his personal. Yeah, he's praying, right? It's his personal yeah. way of communicating yeah. with God and, and giving God the glory for, for his talents and what he does. And yeah, he's, he's taking some flack from it. So we want to pray for him, as we should pray for anybody and everybody who's, who's uh, in a position like that where they can make a great impact, a great example to a lot of people. And he is. I mean, he takes his uh, his role 
you know, as being a, a model for young people very seriously. You were right. telling me a beautiful story. Yeah, a wonderful, wonderful story that they, they highlighted this on, on a, a sports channel of, about a young boy who's suffering from cancer and he's going through chemotherapy. And when he would go into chemo, because he's a Tim Tebow fan, he would do this Tebowing move where you get down on one knee and you put the hand up and it's what Tim Tebow does when he scores a touchdown or does something on the field. And, and uh, he, this boy eventually had the faculty helping, uh, doing it with him alongside. And his father took a picture of him doing it one time. And, and then a, a little caption of chemoing with Tebow or something, chemo for Tebow with Tebow, something like this. And the mother tweeted this photo and that little statement to Tim Tebow. And Tebow actually tweeted back to the boy, mm -hmm. praying for you, big man, something to that effect. Very touching, very moving. Eventually, the boy was flown out to Denver to see a football game, meet Tim Tebow. And, uh, you know, Tim Tebow mentioned the boy's name in, a, in one of his press conferences um, about really what it's like to fight, fight that kind of a fight. So he does seem to be, thank God, a genuine man, um, as other athletes out there have, uh, have made, you know, that, that clear statement. We want to pray for him and, and uh, thank God for his impact. He is given a strong witness with the service work, helping young people. We know the, the pro-life commercial he made a couple of years ago. <laughs> A powerful statement. The way he handles the press, I always find so refreshing. Yeah. He's lighthearted, gives thanks to God, but just comes across in a joyful way. So I uh, want to encourage that, that, that witness. So yeah. we're going to take a quick break, and we'll yeah. be back with Greg Robeson speaking about Life Really Matters. So don't go away. We'll be back in a minute. Hi, welcome back to Life on the Rock. We're joined by Greg Robeson. Welcome. Thank you. Now you are, uh, you've been on the show before and a uh, great show and, and you're, you're starting this new, well not new movement, you've been doing it seven years. Right. This pilgrimage uh, to Washington. Tell us about the pilgrimage, how many people are involved. In sure, program. well when it started it was myself and a friend of mine who's a teacher uh, named Ed Hamer and uh, we called each other and said we should get young people involved in uh, the pro-life movement and take them to Washington DC and it started off with a couple hundred people and and seven years later now there's a thousand and next year it looks like we're gonna have uh, we're bringing two big groups together which is exciting 1600 looks like on the books for next year so anytime you can mobilize 1600 teenagers behind something good right God must be working you know so uh, how many buses is that this year you uh, 17 this year, I believe, 17 full buses. And are you like in the lead bus with radio contact? <laughs> I'm fortunate to fly out for meetings beforehand, oh, so oh. I get some funny looks from my group leaders, you know. <laughs> Fearless leader <laughs> in first class. <laughs> Otherwise, I feel bad for the person sitting in front of me on the bus who has my knees in their back, you know. So. Well, let's talk about some of the 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 adults maybe that are help planning this. There's a big army of people, right? Right, yeah, I certainly don't do it alone. So mm -hmm. there's a bunch of talented youth ministers, campus ministers, and teachers who come together to, uh, to make this happen, which to me is one of the beautiful signs and, 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 uh, uh, about this program, about this pilgrimage. Um, it's, not, it's not Lone Ranger, it's a bunch of talented folks who are being paid nothing to come together and say, I want something excellent for teenagers. I want something formative and substantial and lasting and I'm willing to give up my time and be uncomfortable on a bus and come to meetings and um, mm. and do what it takes to make this happen. So there's a good good chunk of 20 adults who are... And it, it really is heroic. You are a, you're a youth director of ministry at a parish mm -hmm. and your friend, friend Ed is a, a teacher, teacher mm -hmm. right? So I mean this is personal sacrifice. You yeah. guys aren't like rolling in money and just throwing money around. Right. You're making uh, sacrifices to, to do this. Now you're, you're, gather, you're gathering this group from the St. Louis Archdiocese, right? Correct. And, but it's, it's unique in that it's not just uh, a big bus ride to Washington. What are some of the things that uh, make it unique? 
Yeah, it's distinct from uh, a youth conference in, in the sense that we do a little work beforehand to, to get the kids ready. You know, mm -hmm. we, we uh, train and empower our, our chaperones and teach them about uh, sacrifice and help them to pass that on to, to the young people and, uh, and get them ready so that they're not just mm -hmm. amped up and excited about getting on a bus or mm -hmm. spending time in another city. That there's this sense of sacrifice or simplicity or doing without uh, and that that, that that sacrifice can be meaningful and can make a difference. That, that to, to help teens to come to an understanding that their social action can change lives. So there's that preemptive work yeah. to train and to, to get them ready. And then the program itself, our, our speakers utilize those themes and the program is sacrament centered. We, we understand it's not about the hype, it's not about how mm -hmm. wonderful an MC is or anyone or a band or, uh, it's about the power of Jesus working through the sacraments. So everything that we do is pointing to the power of the sacraments, preparing teens for that. And then after, it, the, this pilgrimage is different in that we're aiming to uh, prepare kids to bring it to their city, to back to St. Louis and, and to their, into their life. So um, what will your life be like? Will you pray in front of an abortion clinic with me? I'll be there, will you come? You know, creating those kinds of real and concrete follow-up opportunities. How will your prayer life change? How will your advocacy for life change? Mm -hmm. Those are some of the real questions we ask to create follow-up so it's not just an emotional build-up to a wonderful experience that ends in another city. Right. That it's life-changing for them, their families, their communities, their parishes. Yeah, it makes me think about that, that quote, you know, a very famous popular quote, you know, the future that the youth of the future of the church. But I've always thought that there needs to be a second part of that. And, and I, I personally want to be known for the second part of it, just <laughs> going on record here, um, that <laughs> the future is only as good as it's trained to be. And so you're right, uh, you know, we, the, when you say that the, the youth of the future of the church, well, the, the future of anything is only as good as it's trained to be. So if, it's, if it is all just emotion, excitement, a bus ride, time away from home, you know, going to a you know, new territory, and that's it, that's not very well trained. So you're, you know, what you're talking about is, is taking their hearts, their minds, and helping them understand and more deeply, be more deeply rooted in this, 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 this very necessary uh, part of our, of our world we need to fight in. And, uh, and that, that's, that is something that's just critical. It has to happen. It's beautiful when you can teach and empower teens to think of themselves as defenders of life with the, with the sacraments at the center to, to help them understand that uh, social action isn't just a trend or it's not something that you just tweet about or put on Facebook, right. but that it's a part of their identity. It's, it's part of the command from Christ. The, the, the whole weight of the gospel sits on their shoulders. But when they, when they start to see themselves as Christian, as followers of Christ, it's a beautiful thing, and this this event helps teens to see themselves that yeah, way. Yeah, there's something. There, there really is something to uh, telling someone that you are a fighter, you are a knight, you are a warrior, you are a defender. That helps them fight, defend, and get out there and warrior better. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's when you've made the team, when you get the jersey, you know, when you're on varsity, for example. It's like, wow, I can walk down the hallway with the with the jersey that everybody's got. I'm part of the team. It, it, it elevates something within your own heart and mind, but like you said, when you're, when you're telling young people and, and training them, you know, you are a defender of life. Mm -hmm. It is on your shoulders. Isn't that cool? You're part of something much bigger than yourself. That's, that's, that's a rush. What kind of reaction do you, do you see from the kids when, when, when you get to that point with them and they start to really embrace that? Yeah, there's a, there's a click or a, a light goes on, you know, where they, they start to identify themselves mm -hmm. truly as a disciple, you know, and not just a conference goer or a, a, a youth group kid or a mm -hmm. kid who's in the campus ministry or this parish group. You know, it starts a process of reverse evangelization. All of a sudden they're talking to their teachers. You know, maybe their school doesn't have a pro-life club that's active or... Maybe their religion teacher is saying some funny things in the classroom, you know, all this, or, or their families don't pray together. And they, they start to see themselves that way and, and, it, and it moves like a wave of grace mm -hmm. through all of their communities. And, and that's what we're after. It's very beautiful. It's awesome. Let's talk a little bit more about the preparation. I think that's very interesting because I know this year we just did our retreat, our community retreat we do in mm -hmm. January every year. and. Uh, I just wrote down some goals and little things for what not to do and things to focus on. And it, I think it, for me, it made for a better retreat. You know, for this pilgrimage of Life Really Matters, pilgrimage to Washington, you know, pilgrimages have a very great tradition in our faith of being this great spiritual experience, right? 
So it images life, right? We're on a pilgrimage here, right? We don't cling to things here. We're on a journey to a heavenly. And that's a, that's a simple but powerful little message, right, to give young people. Like you tell them about simplicity. What do you tell the young girls about simplicity? <laughs> the young girls, yes. <laughs> Well, one of the practical ways you can do that, you know, um, is instead of every girl bringing a curling iron, maybe right. four girls can share one in the hotel room, you know. Um, sharing. Yes, sharing, yeah. Or maybe you don't even need the or curling iron. Or doing without, <laughs> yeah, right. And the whole idea of sacrifice, I think teens can take to this. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. so often I feel like in youth ministry, um, people who minister to teens feel like the pressure to water the gospel down, you know, mm -hmm. and, and sacrifice is hard. Jesus brought the hard, the hard teaching and mm -hmm. we don't, we're not doing anybody any favors when we do that. Uh, it's just, sometimes it's just a matter of translating it into a language that teens can understand. And uh, so simplicity or sacrifice is palpable, it's manageable and it's edifying and it's, it's life changing. So uh, we've, on, on this conference, on this pilgrimage, we've done, done simple things, just ask them to look for opportunities to sacrifice. To make room for other people. Right, right. little moments, yeah. you know, whether it's someone who notices the hot dog they buy from the vendor in the street and who's hungry, give it away. Right. Create that moment right. of doing without, you know. Yeah. It's those small moments. I know sometimes we can just always be about our own comfort and everything that we can ruin. I've been on trips like that where mm -hmm. people will blow out of proportion something that goes wrong or a change in the schedule and it's like, hey guys, you know, we're in the Holy Land or we're in Rome right now, we're at Lourdes, let's focus on mm -hmm. <laughs> the great blessing that's here. So that's a, that's a great, a great lesson. Now the mechanics of this pilgrimage itself, you're, the March for Life is on a Monday right. and you're going to go out there on a Friday evening. Right, we'll, we'll gather in mm -hmm. St. Louis and meet with our bishop, Bishop Rice, in, uh, actually in O'Fallon, Illinois, kind of on the way. Mm -hmm. And we have a beautiful kickoff celebration with the Eucharist and our bishop and, and then hop on the bus. So you'll have the a mass, right, to kick off? Right. right, yeah, and he's a wonderful preacher for life. He's just mm -hmm. a great advocate and teenagers mm -hmm. relate to him and understand. And, mm -hmm. and then they'll get on the bus and do the overnight sleepless, you know, trip. Right. And uh, that's the beginning of the sacrifice. And, and then arrive in DC and check into the hotel and then get ready for the, for the evening right. session. So. so you're gonna have speakers there on Saturday and Sunday and right. Monday and right. who are the speakers you had? Sure, year? on Saturday night, Bridget Van Means, the president and vision leader for Thrive, which is mm -hmm. another name for Preg Pregnancy Resource Center, helping, helping women is gonna share. And then that night there'll be the Sacrament of Reconciliation. So priests from all over will come together to hear confessions for a thousand teenagers, and that's right. that's beautiful. So that that's a good point to make too. That's going to be in Arlington, then. Right. right? So you're going to have the support of the local Arlington Presbyterian clergy that mm -hmm. to help out. So right. that's a great kind of sharing and it is and help, and people can contribute to this in different ways. Yeah, I think it's overall it's one of the most beautiful things about this program. You know, the, whether it's people in Arlington coming together uh -huh. to help, or in in St. Louis, it's this setting down of territorialism and parochialism that sometimes just pervades the church, you know, that, you know, I, w I want to put together my trip or right. I want to put together my retreat and do things my way. What's beautiful is all this talent has come together and everyone said, how can we put our talents together to create a mm -hmm. laser focus of something very beautiful? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, and, and, and you see that with the priests coming, coming together. And you mentioned that a lot, the parochialism. You see that as a big problem in the church, right? That, that we should share resources, share uh, energies and things. Yeah, I think that's the trend. Yeah. I think that seems to be the way <laughs> things are going. Every church can't possibly have a young adult group, a youth right, group, a, right. uh, and to try to you know uh, reach out to every every group. And right. I think the U.S. bishops see that and they come out in their writings. So that the direction that things are going is in combating that. that yeah. uh, so the first night as a speaker, what do you know what her message is going to be? Or she's going to talk about forgiveness and forgiveness. repentance and healing. Okay. So she'll okay. share her own testimony and beautiful story and things that she's I been know. through. I don't want to, you know, steal her thunder, right. but uh, I know her story and she's a beautiful woman and, and uh, we'll, do, we'll do a great job. And, uh, and you'll have the sacrament of confession right there. Right. So, that, you know, I, I've seen that so often with like Youth 2000 or Mount 2000 or whatever that uh, you get the kids together and make the sacraments available, adoration, mass, confession, and just incredible things happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just powerful. You mm -hmm. can see, uh, the Holy Spirit working. And so you also have Matt Fred, right? He's going to be a guest right. on Life on the Rock coming up. What's uh, 
Yeah. What's he talking about? Yeah, I, I'm reminded of him every time I uh, see your opening segment for this show with the uh, Australian kid, I oh. think it is. Mm. Saying, Good day, mate. <laughs> uh, he's you know, from Australia? Yeah, he'll, he'll be instantly cool for teenagers, <laughs> you know, with that accent. So, yeah. um, and he's small like that kid, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we, he comes to us through Catholic Answers, and, and he's going to share about how chastity and purity fits into the pro-life message. How does me being... Uh, chaste and pure, how does that <clears throat> make me a better advocate? To, I think that's a great thing to, to synthesize, you know, to, for teens to see that their personal decisions in private uh, affect their, their identity, affect and, and affect the church corporate and, and our work in, 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 as being pro-life advocates. And he's going to put those two together. That's going to be awesome. And then we'll have adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. He'll prepare the teens and get, get everyone gearing toward, uh, toward Jesus and, set, and gathering around our Lord in worship. And what I think is so powerful about these things, too, is some of these kids, it might be the first time that they, they see mm -hmm. Jesus exposed in the monsters. You have the Blessed Sacrament and yeah. honored and worshiped in that way. And so that can jumpstart them. You know, they could have a powerful experience here Amen. and say, hey, I want to do that some more. Mm -hmm. And so these intense, you kind of break out of your routine. You leave home and you're right. with these kids and these enthusiastic leader, youth leaders, and uh, he's tried some new things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, last year, I, a girl from my group uh, that I brought from my youth group where I work, she came into the trip with a, what she would have identified to be a, a pro-choice attitude. Uh, and I, it might have, I, I think she shared about adoration of the Blessed Sacrament and, and one of the speakers, and uh, she came out of the trip having flipped just for, from one trip, you know, and becoming mm -hmm. a very uh, strong advocate and, and speaking in a much different way. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful to watch the, you know, the Jesus work like that through the sacraments. Right. I, you know, it's characteristic of these marches, and I guess any time really you get, like, Christian fellowship is joy. And that joy is so convicting. I mean, mm -hmm. people experience World Youth Day. You experience that, and you say, which path in life am I going to take? I'm going to go with the Christians here. I'm going to go with the mm -hmm. secular culture. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back in a minute with Greg Robeson. It's not like a normal retreat where you just simply pray and you actually go out and stand up for something. It was just really powerful to see not only all different groups from all over the country, but just all different religions, all different races, all different ages, just seeing us all come together and stand up for life. It's not just Catholics there, it's Christians. Presbyterians, it's everyone. And it's just really nice to know that we are a community. We're one in this. Something that was really powerful during the march was just reading some of the signs that some of the people were carrying. I actually had pictures of aborted babies. It's definitely graphic, but it just makes it that more real. It shows you that this really does happen and that you're not just walking just to get some exercise. It's showing that you're walking to stand up for something that you believe in. I think the most powerful part is just the sheer number of people. When you are in the middle of the march and you just look back and it's an ocean of people for as far as you can see in both directions. Seeing all those people, it's like you know that it's not just you and some other people, it's you and like tens of thousands of other people standing up. And it's just so incredible to know how many other people have the same beliefs and how many other people are willing to stand up for life because that's not something that you get a lot in like the media. Seeing that for yourself is really incredible. Watch that spell! Right. Put some heart into it! Right. What I got out of it was that we are called to love all walks of life, whether it's an unborn baby or an elderly person. I think I took away that we're called to like stand up for everyone that can't stand up for themselves. We're all called to lead others to Christ. It just feels like I'm trying to do my part to try to get them to cry, so it just makes me feel joyful. If you say that you're pro-life, and if you believe that abortion is wrong, you need to go. It's just like showing that you, you are true to your words. You're not just somebody who's saying it just so you can say it. It's actually 
demonstrating that you believe what you say. Just try it. Your life will literally be changed. I know that's cliche, but you have a whole new perspective after going on the trip. I think it's just such an important thing to do, and since Roe vs. Wade hasn't been reversed yet, there's still that need for the march, and I want to be as much a part of that as possible, so I hope to continue going as long as I can. Okay, Greg, you know, we should mention you've been taking a group for seven years, so you are kind of been building and honing this, and it's not just something that happens like that. I think that's an important thing to, for people in ministry to remember that right. sometimes we want really quick results, you know. Yeah, but I want to end abortion now. You know? <laughs> I want to change teens' lives now, right? And even your whole pilgrimage package you have here, right? You've developed that. Mm -hmm. so. But uh, you wanted to mention something about the video? Yeah, <laughs> thanks to Lantern yeah. Creek Productions and Frank yeah. and Jordan for putting that together. They did a great job. It's a video crew that came out to take footage and do the interviews and compress everything, mm -hmm. like your folks do here in the... Right in the network, so, but uh, I don't know if you noticed the painting mm. that they had in the backdrop that was selected, that was actually part of the program, um, mm -hmm. and it has been for a couple of years now, something I kind of just came up with uh, uh, called Pro-Life Painter. Uh, mm. and, uh, um, but it's uh, someone you know personally. It is. Yeah. 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 It's and it's my wife, yeah. Deanna. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, hello, Deanna, <laughs> Emily, Isaac, Elijah. There they are. Okay. I see the pictures. Um, yeah. yeah, so she uh, she uh, she uh, paints that during the program. So it's a live. Yeah. Uh, you might maybe you've heard of Jesus Painter. That's a uh, kind of a popular thing out there in some right. churches. But uh, we we did, we just kind of came up with pro life painter. So uh, we have a, a veil. And, and she'll, uh, the MC will interact with her and, and okay, what are you going to paint, you know? And on that, that particular one, she put together uh, the theme of Jesus on the cross when he says, this is my body given up for you. And the feminist agenda or, you know, sometimes, what, sometimes what's used as a support to the choice to choose abortion. Mm -hmm. This is my body. I can do what I want. She put those two themes together mm -hmm. to really illuminate that right. in this painting and, and right. within a time frame of an hour or two. Right. So she begins the painting and, and then we pull the curtain and then the speaker goes and there's sacrament mm -hmm. or, you know, what, whatever the program has. And then, and then you then switch the out the and bring the other one in? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the I'm one just, you painted. I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What I did was a cartoon. No. But so she's doing it live behind the curtain wall yeah. this is going on. That's pretty incredible stuff. Yeah, it is. And then when you, we take the curtain open year after year, it's amazing. You know, kids sit mm -hmm. there all standing on the edge of their seat, taking pictures of the sacred image yeah. that my wife's given her heart to. And, and then we, the volunteers bring it up on stage. <coughs> Does you know. she kind of bump the curtain a little bit now and then? So it looks like something's happening. <laughs> Add to the suspense. I think one year she dropped paint or one of the lights went out or something. And it was quite a it was quite a scene behind the curtain, you know. Scream now that. But uh, that's it's beautiful. It's it's neat to see the way kids and, react and, to art. But see, I was going to say, but that, that's a great hook because you know, and we we do need to to be creative and and uh, you know, I'm, I I never forget um, hearing someone from um, a pro life organization years ago say there's there's a there's one thing we really need to remember in this type of work is we have to have a sense of humor. And the reason we have to have a sense of humor is we're fighting a pretty dark battle. Right. And it's very easy to get over serious sometimes. And mm -hmm. so while we do need to be very serious at certain points, we do have to have a sense of humor and we have to have a certain vibrancy about us right. and, and a creativity in, in, in drawing people and engaging people so they can experience things uh, that have to do with this. And that, that's where I, you know, the description of what your wife does with that painting is very engaging. Because mm -hmm. as you describe it, I'm intrigued by it. Yeah. I'm not even there. Right. And I'm, I'm really drawn in to say, well, I'd, I'd love to see how that mm -hmm. you know, manifests and unfolds. Yeah, it yeah. takes great courage to face the evil of abortion and say, I'm going to stand my ground. I'm not going to be a person who says, well, this will be an evil that will be defeated in our grandkids' generation. Mm. I'm going to stand my ground against this now, and I'm going to give my life to stand up for this. It takes great courage. Yeah. And sometimes in, in that kind of a serious, dramatic moment, you start to take yourself too seriously. It's one of the things I appreciate about the speakers that we've recruited, that they, they get up on stage and the lights and the, you know, and it's being filmed and it's, uh, you know, and teens, you know, think they walk on water, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing and they have a wonderful message. But what I've experienced is they understand that it's not about them or their books or their CDs, that, that what they're doing is true 
advocacy, that they're pointing to something else, right. not their career. And I've really appreciated working with those types of artists in yeah. this in this event. Yeah, I, I remember Pope Benedict said one time that you know, sometimes God gives us a nudge, with, and he had that God has a sense of humor, and He gives us a nudge not to take ourselves so seriously, seriously because. Yeah. You know, God is the one in control. He's the one that wins the battle. I mean, mm -hmm. we show up and do our part, but the victory is His, and it's not all on our shoulders, up to us, so to speak, you know, all up to my abilities or whatever. Well, let's talk about, you know, you've done this for a number of years, working with young people, taking people to the march. You know, one of the purposes of this show is to encourage young people to go to the March for Life, and it is, it's a very young event. What kind of changes have you seen in people that go, young people that go? Well, they go back to their schools and they start pro-life clubs. They uh, are going back to their families and, uh, you know, asking fundamental spiritual questions. Right. Um, neat to see a, a teenager stand up to mom or dad about mm -hmm. abortion. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, is, what, what do you believe, mom right. or dad? Um, right. Back to their parishes. That you, and we'd like to believe that every parish is a haven of pro-life activity, but maybe they've come back and challenged that that mm -hmm. there too. Um, it's wonderful and I would love to see, you know, we're, this, this Life Really Matters pilgrimage is not an event that we're looking to see grow across the country, mm -hmm. you know, and, and as, we, as we work together with our diocesan agencies, we're not looking to make this into a national event. I'd love to see it. other dioceses, right. groups of talent come together and right. crop up and, 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 you know, work together to, uh, minister to their teens and create maybe a similar type of a, a pilgrimage to the And you remind me, before we forget, that you mentioned an auxiliary bishop sends you out, and then Bishop Carlson, the Bishop of St. Louis, or Archbishop, is going to have them a mass for you out there. Right. What kind of effect does that have on the young people, to see their shepherd? And I mean, you know, when you're ever at a mass with a bishop, he brings a certain mm -hmm. gravitas that can be, uh, give quite an impression. Gravitas, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well said. Yeah. <laughs> Machismo. <laughs> <laughs> and Archbishop Carlson does not like that. I, I remember the first year when he first came to St. Louis, and I, I invited him to come and, uh, to our program, and he did. And, and he was on stage for 10 minutes, and he roared just an authentic, real roar of a pro-life message, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had the kids standing on Standing O, just, just, and, and he walked off the stage, and, and I walked him to his c car, and he goes, is that what you were looking for? <laughs> <laughs> well, they, I think the sheep recognize the voice of the good shepherd and the minister there, you know, mm -hmm. and I've seen it happen, too, that it's just a charism that, that you know, God gives his shepherds there, and especially the bishop uh, to yeah. lead. It's beautiful to see the teens gathered around, so on, on Monday morning, 1,600, actually another group's going to join on 1,600 mm -hmm. teens will be gathered with our Archbishop for, for Mass, and uh, it, it, it is beautiful, and, right. and he, uh, he definitely uh, is, is an asset and uh, has a profound effect on us. Prior to that, um, the only other part of the program I didn't mention was that, um, that uh, Brian Westbrook from uh, 40 Days for Life is going to bring part of his team out and mm -hmm. uh, empower the teens. That uh, was one of the components we talked about earlier in the show, to come back to St. Louis and, and get involved. And 40 Days for Life, if you don't know, advocates prayer in front of clinics like Planned Parenthood that are doing abortions. And recognizing that, they're such a beautiful work, recognizing that prayer is the moving force. That's, 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 that's the center, that there has to be action centered in prayer. And uh, they're getting all kinds of folks to come and, and participate in that. And so Brian's gonna energize the mm. teens to see that this isn't just a trip, this isn't just something to be, you know, uh, sensational about mm -hmm. in the nation's capital, but this is something we have to live every day. So he's going to concretize and really make real some avenues of living this every day. So. And we should say in Missouri there, you've had a lot of success. You all, I mean, the pro-life movement's had a lot of success. Can you describe that with closing clinic, clinics and things? Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this, uh, this effort with Life Really Matters is actually uh, expanding. And uh, we're now working with several other pro-life agencies in the uh, in, in Missouri, which is very exciting. Mm -hmm. That's very exciting to see um, uh, these agencies, um, ha heads of these agencies, coming together to answer the question: What what do we have to do? 
to end abortion. And so Life Really Matters is a, a collaborator. This, this isn't just a youth event, and we're working, we're collaborating, and some of the, some of the speakers are from, some from these other agencies, these pro-life agencies. Uh, and so we're coming together, and uh, on, on January 19th, we're gonna have the first annual Midwest rally. So we've got San Francisco every year and, and Washington DC, and this year we're gonna converge on our state's capital and uh, gather our, our pro-life leaders together and, and meet with uh, some politicians and, and um, start to get some, some laser focus uh, with that. So but, that's uh, right before you go to Washington. Right, the okay. day before that day trip. Before, okay. Yeah. So, uh, but th this this work with one of these agencies, Forty Days for Life, that I mentioned, um, Kathy Fork in in Columbia, Missouri, uh, leading that Forty Days for Life, that group, getting those prayer warriors there, have created so much pressure that mm -hmm. they have all but closed the building in Columbia. The Planned Parenthood is now routing all their clients to St. Louis. So Missouri is now down effectively down to one agency, one, one location doing abortions, one wow, Planned Parenthood. Wow. And our goal with this, uh, uh, this group, this family that's come together called Life Now, mm -hmm. is to, uh, with prayer, uh, close that one too and be the mm -hmm. first abortion-free state in right. Missouri. So yeah, that's we're seeing tremendous. some, yeah. we're seeing the power of the right. Holy Spirit. And what have you seen like the youth brings to this equation? I mean, I know the youth, do not have the experience of older people, but they have their own gift. And as Doug often points out, you know, they need to be guided and formed. Uh, but what do you think is their gift to this pro-life movement? Uh, energy and passion is one. One of the things I say, no matter what group of teenagers I'm talking to, I'll be invited to a parish mission or a grade school or mm -hmm. whatever the event. One of the first things I almost always say is, I love being with you guys. I did, whatever it is, mm -hmm. whatever, whether I'm in a sweaty gymnasium or a large youth conference, one of the first things I usually say to them is, I love being with teenagers. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a blessing. And the reason is because you have energy and passion. And when that energy is directed in good and holy ways, you are powerful. And uh, that's one of the, the greatest gifts in, in the whole pro-life movement, starting mm -hmm. to harness that. Planned Parenthood and, and these other agencies have been targeting youth and young adults as part of their, their structure for years. They're on you know, college right? campuses. That's right, right. Yeah. 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 And so we've got to reclaim them right. for the gospel. Right. Say, young people, awaken, arise. Yeah. You know? And I think that's, the marches do a lot for that in the sense that we, you know, one of the, on your video mentioned that <coughs> about the great numbers. And as a, there's a lot of young people on the Washington March, and when a young person goes and see people like-minded and see this other energy, it's a building thing, mm -hmm. right? It's like a wave that comes. There's a solidarity yeah. there that they uh, experience. Yes, yeah. and it's not just the future of the church, the yeah. young people, they're the, they're the now. You know, right. I, I imagine being a pastor and, and having a teenager come to me and say, you know, what, what are we doing for pro-life advocacy in, in our parish? You know, how, mm -hmm. what, how exciting that meet, would be to it, harness that energy and direct that energy, you know? Right. So, to, right. to, to claim it. Okay. So. Well, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with Greg Robeson speaking about his pilgrimage to Washington with the youth. So don't go away. We'll be back in a minute. Well, Greg, let's get back to, we didn't quite make it there, about the, the changes. Maybe you've seen the, the effect on young people mm -hmm. that go on a pilgrimage like that. What have you seen? Yeah, thank you. Well, pilgrimage, I, I think, is a, a beautiful word, that, that's, that sense of sacrifice. I, I've seen and interacted with and planned and helped uh, put together all kinds of different events. But when you look at the profile of maybe a year for a, a teenager, they'll go, go on this type of event and this type of retreat and this experience. Pilgrimage, when it's a trip like this, cuts, it cuts deeper when they have the opportunity to, to make those sacrifices we were talking about, mm -hmm. to see that they belong to a bigger church than what they see at their parish, 
to see, you know, with the with this Washington D.C. trip, to see tens of thousands, or just a sea of people. It's people that so often you hear that those types of stories. Kids come back and they say, "Mom, Dad, I, there was people as far as I could see." <laughs> you know. Uh, or we we spoke about the the mass the night before for young people at the Immaculate, the Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. Mm -hmm. I've been like a priest at that, ma and you, you, know, you walk down the, the main aisle there and it's almost, sometimes you got to turn just to fit, mm -hmm. there's so many people filling up that huge church right. that who can see that and not be moved? You know? Right. So. I think it's so key for teens mm -hmm. to see that they belong to that, that right. bigger church right. and then to see that um, their marching matters, their presence in that city matters their advocacy within their school as one of the 10 or 100 or whatever number they have going from their school, that that matters. They, they see that their life matters, their own life. Um, and then they begin to see that all life matters. Well, let's talk about too, uh, the effect of being in Washington. Um, our country has a great history of demonstrations and movements, and it's, it's, it's had a real effect, a real change on society. And I can remember my first time going to the march, and you march and you go to in front, you know, you go by the Capitol, and you can you used to start by the White House and things. You go up to the Supreme Court. Sometimes they have policemen up there and everything, but it's pretty dramatic, right? You're there in front of the court that's kind of on a much higher level there. And you're there saying, you know, we want to defend life. Mm -hmm. What is that for young people? I Maybe mean, it's the first time they've been to Washington. Yeah, and you look up and you see the snipers with yeah. the rifles, and you know, <laughs> yeah. it's a, you're right, it is dramatic. Yeah. Um, and it can be an abrupt end too. You know, mm -hmm. it can have this feeling. You get to that, get to those courthouse steps where so many decisions are made, and, right. and this feeling of, what now? Right. You know, what what now? But I think that's good for teens to see that that action has mm -hmm. an end. And now this experience, which has abruptly ended at these steps, mm -hmm. has got to be translated into their own lives. Right. Very soon we're going to get on buses and go back home. It's kind of, it is kind of a dramatic ending, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's supposed to be a bridge. Right. You know, those steps up the courthouse are supposed to be a bridge into their life. Well, <clears throat> all the judges, all the politicians were all teenagers. That's at right. one point they were in those shoes. They, they're you know, starry-eyed about the idea of Washington and, and, and laws that affect and impact so many, so many lives, uh, born and unborn. And uh, look at them now, up there in their suits and ties mm -hmm. and, and power briefcases and power lunches making, uh, making decisions that are um, you know, so enormous mm -hmm. that these teenagers got to look at that and hopefully think, you know, where, where am I going to make the decisions or right. what am I going to do that's going to impact? on this scale, because so much can be said about experience, can it? I mean, mm -hmm. it's one thing to hear about something, which is, which is good, but when you're in the, in the, in the throes of it and you're, you're experiencing and, you know, the elbows are thrown mm -hmm. around under that basket as you're going for that, you know, that, that rebound, I mean, you're feeling uh, everything there. That, that's, a, that's big, isn't it? Right, yeah, yeah. To actually experience something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, it is. And uh, sometimes teens can't put their finger on it, you know, they, they'll, they'll, they'll share, my life is different, but I'm not sure how just yet. Mm. That was awesome. You know, it's <laughs> got to be the most overused <laughs> word in youth ministry. That was awesome. But then as you walk with them in their journey toward Christ, mm -hmm. that pilgrimage, this, this starts to mm -hmm. take root. And they're processing all these things, whether it's a politician that they heard, whether it was the actual experience or the emotion of being in that, you know, that sea of people or being in a mass with their archbishop with 1,600 other teenagers or a particular private sacramental moment or a quiet moment of prayer, you know, whatever the moment was, the Spirit is grabbing them and, and, and it's, 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 it's beautiful to walk with them in that, in that journey. So. Now you've said you want lasting ripples, right? And you do a follow-up when mm -hmm. you come home. What are some of the things you do uh, with the young people to help them process this experience and everything? Right. Um, well, it, myself in, in our own youth group, what we'll, we have testimony and, and times, and we actually have that worked into the trip on the way back. So we encourage all the kids to get up and share what struck you. How did you hear the Holy Spirit on this trip? And what we do they normally them. say for something like oh, that? Oh, you hear the whole gamut. You, know, <laughs> you hear the whole, the whole gamut. Um, so we've heard the dramatic, yeah. I, I, you know, teary-eyed. Uh -huh. um, I came into this trip, you know, thinking this was all about women's rights and I was going to tear this you know, you know, you guys had it all wrong. You know, I, mean, I, I came into this thinking you guys were crazy, and uh, and and now my heart is melted, right. and uh, I see that 
there's something bigger going on here. So you hear those dramatic mm -hmm. stories all, all the way to uh, just what I just shared, you know, that uh, my life is different, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not sure how. So mm -hmm. it's beautiful to see how God grabs the kids in, all yeah. the, in the diversity of different ways. And then they take those stories back to their communities, and that's often the first step. They go back to their school, and, and, and these, all these different group leaders that come together in such a beautiful way can create opportunities for testimony. So kids get up in front of their parish, and they say, mm -hmm. thank you for all the fundraising. Thank you for all your support and helping us get there, because it's an expensive trip. These are some of the things that we, that we saw. These are some of the things, life-changing things that I experienced. Um, and they'll, t they'll take it to their school the same way. And then we mentioned back to their families. You know, mm -hmm. That's a beautiful thing to see. Mm -hmm. you know? So you see new pro-life clubs popping up, parishes, little ripples in the parishes, all that, all that zeal and energy, and in the families, you know, mm -hmm. the domestic church. That's, that's where it's at. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember what, we had a guest on the show one time that you know, he had a kind of, he almost he had this accident and it made him think about his life and then his mother was real involved in the pro-life movement and he was having this kind of conversion to God and he jumped into the pro-life movement. He just wanted to get closer to God and that was the vehicle mm -hmm. that grew into a greater devotional life, sacramental life and everything. But it, it is amazing how you, one of the young people said it, how it, you attract all different kinds of people. You know, even sometimes non-believers, you know, will mm -hmm. be pro-life and how it can be this great unifying um, you know, service of truth or trying yeah. to get justice here. That, that can be beautiful too for a teenager to be marching next right. to a Protestant or next to a Muslim or next to an atheist who's pro-life, right. you know, uh, because natural law, you know, or, uh, uh, and that, that they see that, that this is bigger. You know, right. they, they, wow, this isn't just a Catholic thing? Right. You know, or, 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 or the Catholic Church isn't just in St. Louis, or, you know. Um. <laughs> right. I, I can remember one year, I'd probably still do it, but they had the, the Orthodox monks singing their chant in their liturgical language, whatever it was, and, you know, with the different vestments they were and everything, and I was like, you know, that's not something you see every day, you know, <laughs> but mm -hmm. at the Washington March, you just see every facet of the church. You hear testimonies, right, of maybe mm -hmm. post-abortive women mm -hmm. healing, post-abortive fathers. Yes. Uh, so there's a lot of information being imparted to the young people, right. too. So you want to you want to take the young people they've been charged up, had this experience, translate it into some action activity, some form of bearing witness, mm -hmm. right. right? When they get home, right? Yeah. So not just bearing witness. That's mm -hmm. I think that's the first step. But then a lot of teens are ready for the next step. So mm -hmm. we uh, will invite them to come pray, to pray with us. You know, and br invite them into some of these action steps. Earlier I mentioned the, the, the Life Now family, all these pro-life agencies that are, that are coming together. Uh, there's going to be some real exciting opportunities for young people to be involved. We recognize, all these pro-life leaders recognize how Planned Parent has invested into them. And actually, I, I think I shared with you uh, uh, earlier that uh, we learned, someone shared with me that Planned Parenthood had spent an additional $35,000 to combat prayer. We saw, we got a copy of oh. their budget. <laughs> and uh, that, that this, this, this 40 Days for Life initiative, that's part of this bigger pro-life initiative, uh, was getting people to come and pray in front of the clinic with, with, with uh, uh, sidewalk counselors and with nurses and with sonography equipment and getting women to step on, you know, uh, RVs to see pictures of their baby, you know, and, and, and the, the whole the whole ministry mm -hmm. uh, and, and the 40 Days for Life actually had a, a line item this last fiscal right. year in the budget for Planned Parenthood. They had to raise an additional $35,000 and it said to combat 40 Days Prayer Initiative. Well, prayer is such a problem in this country. You know, we just have far too many people. Too praying. many people praying. Yeah. yeah, everybody's sore on their knees. Yeah. Well, tell us, is there a website for your... Uh for your pilgrimage? And, yeah. yeah, people can check out more info about this year's pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. uh, the video that we saw on the show is up there too, in, in case they want to share it with somebody else, it's some good teen testimony. And that's lifereallymatters.com. And then uh, another uh, agency that's working with us is Monk Rock. Um, they handle like all our merchandise and, uh, you know, f sometimes follow through. The first part of follow through is just putting something about pro life or, or Catholic identity in a teenager's hands. You know, here's a St. Benedict medal. Here's a rosary. You know, mm -hmm. you could pray this for babies every day. You can pray this, you know. Who are they again? Monk Rock? 
Yes, yeah. Monk Rock is the name of an apostolate in, huh. in uh, St. Louis, which is uh, beautiful. They're doing great stuff, but uh, uh, so you can go to monkrock.com and they have a link to our website and to EWTN's website. Uh, but uh, they're, they're putting things in teenagers' hands, whether it's a t-shirt, you know, to, to, to get them thinking differently or something to help them be devotional, um, mm -hmm. to pray differently. Uh, so we're grateful to Monk Rock for, for their work and advocacy with our, with our program. But yeah, you can go to lifelymatters.com to learn more info about, about this and year. And hopefully other dioceses might imitate your model here, what you're doing. I think that would spread. be beautiful, yeah. yeah. Though I th I've heard things about other, you know, dioceses doing, doing things and, uh, um, that that would be, uh, that would make my day. That would be that would just be awesome, you know. And you know, I love the themes we've hit tonight. That you know, what what a pilgrimage like this can how it can teach and form young people. Obviously, the good itself of being there for the cause for life, but to teach them about solidarity, mm -hmm. you know, standing up for truth. You know, we hear so often our Holy Father speaking against the relativism of these times. Mm -hmm. That uh, you know, the truth, the dignity of the human person. You know, we can't use or just throw away human life. It should be respected. And uh, to stand up for that, that, you know, that it's possible you can have an effect in this culture, right? We go and, and march on Washington, you know, the most powerful country on earth, and we make this statement. That's teaching young people to, you know, hey, do something with your life, right? Mm -hmm. For a cause, a cause for good. And, uh, and the solidarity aspect, you know, I, I think that is such a tool of the devil that he wants to, and that's an effect of sin, that he wants to separate us, divide us. You know, if we're bonded together as a people, as a church, we can really walk through anything, I think, and, and overcome anything. What a, a great message for our young people. What, maybe these last few minutes, what is your hopes this year? What do you really hope these young people will get on this trip? Well, the, the critical point of by which we evaluate this pilgrimage every year mm -hmm. is what lasting change is created, which is a theme yeah. we've talked about uh, a couple times. So when a teen comes up to me, I, I say it's a success when a teen or, or even a chaperone or anyone comes up to me and says, you know, like this happened a couple years ago. They were listening to a story from Abby Johnson, who used to work in the Planned Parenthood Clinic, and she was sharing her testimony mm -hmm. about how she, had, she was holding the sonogram equipment on their their clients uh, to, so they could be more efficient at killing babies. And uh, her arm got sore from eight hour shift of holding this piece of equipment. And, and, and uh, the next day she was in at church where she goes, and if your arm causes you to sin, cut it off. Mm -hmm. And she was feeling the pain, you know. And wow. this teen listened to this story about how Abby's personal uh, sin, you know, and personal, her personal ch choices uh, were uh, yeah, visible to God, were, were uh, it was, Abby shared as if it was a personal message to God. And this teen came up to me and said, when, I, when Abby was speaking, it was as if I could hear God saying the same thing to me. So when they translate something from a speaker or a part of the program mm -hmm. into their own life, and they say, they say to me, my life is now going to be different. You know, right. is that, that gut wrenching moment, you know, yeah. somebody says, hey, great job planning that, you know, that, oh, wow, that was cool. Those are good to hear, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, but when a kid walks up to you and says, my life's going to be different. Right. Thank you. You know, th 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 you recognize right. that moment, right. you know, and, and then you want to carry that and you say, OK, well, how, you know, let's, mm -hmm. what, how, you know, but um, yeah. so that's the measure of success for us is, is um, that, that there that, that there is follow through. So right. it's an important part of our program on Monday right. uh, when, we're, when we're saying, okay, we're heading back to St. Louis. These are the ways that uh, you guys can be involved. And you'll be on the bus on the way back? <laughs> <laughs> on that speaker? More meetings. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for, for joining us. And that's thank been a, a great show. And I think that's a, a great theme to end with is that you know, the mission, the call that we all have to affect a change renews us, renews our Christian vocation, renews the church. So I want to encourage our young people to go to that march. Uh, if you're in, in California, go to the marches out there. On the East Coast, go to, to Washington. And now we've got a new one in St. That's Louis. That's right, so. January 19th in Jefferson City. January 19th, Jefferson City. So, yeah. well, the Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. May our Heavenly Father shine His face upon you and give you His peace. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll see you next week.